Sandra LaFlamme with Canines for Heroes with Amber. You know her on Facebook as Amber Caroline. And she has a great experience with service dogs because in college, where'd you go to school? I went to Florida Gulf Coast University and I had two, one blind and one partially blind roommate um, who had a service animal, a guide dog. And we learned, we learned all about her guide dog and how we can help out and um, essentially help to interact with her around her service animal. Yeah, the nice thing is, what we have in common with any CMI guide dog and Canines for Heroes are they're with the family for a long time. They are not a family pet. They are fun to be around, but when they're working, they need to be working. They per a prescribed dog with Americans with Disability. And you had some specific events that led up for you to internalize what we're going to talk about. Yes. Um, I grew up in England, and we were taught that in there to interact with seeing eye dogs because that's what we called them and they were very popular around. Um, and then when I went to college, of course, I had that one roommate um, and we ended up talking to a lot of our sisters in our sorority about it, um, discussing essentially how to function around her and around the seeing eye dog. Seeing eye dog. Um, and so we'd like to speak and talk to our community on how you can help out as individual citizens. Um, in terms of what to do and what not to do with the sea, a service animal or a sea Okay, so here's something that I don't know if all of you know, but something very important for those who either have a service animal know, needs to know, or someone like me needs to know. Say we're in a store setting, and I come up to you and I ask you about your service animal. Hi, is that a service animal? I guess it is. What does your service animal provide? Support. Okay, perfect. That is all you need to tell me, and that is all I'm allowed to ask. Due to this law called HIPAA, um, I am not allowed to discriminate you based on your answer, and you do not need to tell me more than you are comfortable with answering. This is to protect you and to protect me and both of our rights. Um, there are also four things that people who do not need service animals or do not require animals should know. So when interacting with a service animal, here are the things that you need to know how to do. So you see a service animal, it's coming towards you. Keep your hands to your side, keep your head turned away, and your eye focused on the owner, not the dog. As far as you're concerned, the dog does not exist, and all you need to kind of step out of the way for is for the person to pass through. You walk, make sure that the dog is not distracted by you. If the dog is, ignore them. Pretend they don't exist, because the best thing you can do as a civilian is making sure that you do not interrupt that service, you are not a distraction or an obstacle to that person. That is the best thing you can do. And then if you see a dog that is alone, wandering alone, here's how you can help. Say you see a dog, say you're in a store, you see a dog wandering alone and it comes up to you. Here's everything you need to know how to do. If the dog wanders up to you and you see that it's alone without an owner, here are the two things you can do. First, call, see if the dog has, you know, gotten loose from its owner and call around. Hey, has anybody lost this dog? If nobody answers, then try and walk up and down the aisles or if the dog will, see if the dog will lead you to their owner. If neither of these things happen and you just have this dog loose, call a manager or call 911. At the worst case scenario, you have to call 911 and you do find the owner and the owner is just fine. This way, you are protecting your own rights, but you are also protecting their rights and making sure that everyone in the end is safe. This is incredibly important to do because um, you just you don't want to be ended up in a situation where that person is harmed or you are harmed and everyone is safe and okay. Three, two, one, okay, go. Hey y'all, my name is Amber and this is Jim and Ember. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and about your relationship with Ember, as well as you know some of the services that she provides you. Well, I used to be a firefighter and I was injured in the line of duty and I had severely injured my back. Mm -hmm. Um, and I suffer from PTSD. So Ember is going to not only be a assistant or be for walking and um, picking things up, and she's also going to help me with my PTSD. Okay, perfect. Um, so is there anything that you would like people out there to know um, about how you and Ember go around? Is there anything you need them to know um, when you're out in public um, and they may approach you, what's something that you think you know, people really need to know? Well, 
people need to know when they're walking around the dog to ignore them. Um, there's some people that have a dog and um, they, they it's might, like yeah, yeah, it's it was their pet or they raised them. And it's, everybody, it's kind of like, you know, walking in a car lot and people yeah. have, they drive this car and so they talk to you about it. But uh, it's the people that want to come and approach her. Mm -hmm. And that's very difficult. And when you ask them not to, yeah. they turn around and still try to do it. Yeah. I've had a couple of instances where that's where happened. You walk past them and you turn and you see someone trying to chase after her, yes. pet her, that sort of thing. Correct. Yeah. And it's important that they don't do that because she does specialized tasks for you. Does, is she like an alert dog that she's able to alert? you an episode or attack that may come on? Um, well, it'll be a little bit of an anxiety attack, yeah. um, but it'll be more for stability, yeah. balance and stability, and then just help me get out of the house. Yeah. It'll help me with general assistance. And it's great because she does all these great tasks for you. Wouldn't it be a struggle for you to do these tasks, or at least a little impossible for you to do these tasks without her, right? Yes, it would. So it's really important that civilians like me or people who don't have service animals like me um, need to understand these rules and things that we can do in order to make sure that we don't become an obstacle in your way, in your life. Right. And I don't expect people to get out of my way when yeah. I'm walking because they have just met the same rights as I do walking through the store. It's just the people need to understand that not to interrupt. I, I mean, I wouldn't go ask somebody, can I pet your oxygen tank yeah. or can I, can I ride around in your wheelchair? Yeah. <laughs> please don't ride around. Or please, please don't, don't pet my dog. Don't pet ride my dog. My dog. And, yeah, I, don't my dog. Yeah. So it takes, when they distract her, it takes her attention away from yeah. my needs. That's actually a really important message, and I completely agree with you. I know that I have many instances with my sorority sisters where someone would try and pet their dog or distract the dog. They'd make noises or whistles, and or like the sound. And the problem with that is she wouldn't be the dog wouldn't be able to focus on that person. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, very important that that doesn't happen anymore. Exactly, and I've run into several, I was walking into the restaurant today mm -hmm. and um, people were very nice and they walked, pulled their children aside and said, you know, please do not pet or you can't pet the dog. So there's a lot of people that understand it, but yeah. it's those few what don't and cause issues. Yeah, that kind of ruin it for the rest. Yes, exactly. Yeah.